got a guest today, which is really exciting. So Dafina Ganeva, she's a um, psychotherapist and she's based in London. And we kind of got to know each other um, a little bit through um, both becoming mums and being in a kind of postpartum support community. And so I thought it would be great to have Davina on the um, on my YouTube so we could have more of a discussion really about mental health and motherhood. So it's great to have you, Davina. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, thank you for having me today. I'm quite excited, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's brilliant because as I always say on my channel, I'm currently training to be a counsellor and you're a fully trained psychotherapist and practicing as well as juggling being a mum um, which is yeah a lot a lot to manage but, I can imagine that's that's a bit of a magic yeah <laughs> um, it, it takes a lot of um, skills and it's hard yeah yeah because um because I know before we arranged to speak on this interview we had a little chat on the phone and and we were talking just about the chat that's a huge challenge in itself is to navigate kind of working as a mom and 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 finding finding things to do for yourself as well as being in that that motherhood role which i'm sure is something and um, that we can we can talk about a bit more later on yeah i'll say motherhood on its own it's difficult it's it's very difficult it's like you can never get it perfect there's always something that you know you're struggling with um, it's super tiring and I mean I guess everyone who's been there knows and, but I, I personally struggle a lot with uh, the lack of sleep and um, that's a big thing for me and then you know uh, to, to add career and a job and you know all the other things that we do on top of that anyway like keeping the household running and a husband happy and uh, be a good friend and a good daughter and a good sister and it, oh, um, it becomes a real struggle at some point if you don't have the right support um, I'd say it's almost impossible yeah like I always think that phrase I don't know if you've heard it where it says it takes a village and um, it's sort mm. of that motherhood phrase of the fact that you know in times gone by for most of our history we would have had that real sense of community and you would have had the support of lots of people so parenting has become a lot more um, there's a lot more responsibility on a smaller number of people now particularly mm. if you don't live close to family and um, which a lot of people don't now so so that can bring its own challenges no, it, it, it definitely takes a village to raise a child. In, I mean, I come from Bulgaria, and back home, you know, um, it's different. People, people live like much closer to their families, and it's a small country anyway. So even if you don't like, you're always there for the weekend, and um, the support is just on a different level. Um, London it's a different thing you know and even though I'm lucky to have most of my family around um now with lockdown and for me and like for a lot of uh mum friends who I've got like um recently since I had my son you know for us um our babies were born in lockdown you know and um we're still in lockdown you know you we had uh, quite a few now and um it becomes it, it, it it's a bit controversial you know like we I know that we need to keep safe and um it's the right thing to do but it's it, it's really hard to not have the support and even if you voice it even if you say you need help you, you can't even get it because it's it's just not allowed so um yeah it's tough yeah and and what you said then about because obviously we're because the people will be watching this at all different timelines on YouTube but yeah we're in I think we're in the UK we're on our third lockdown we're nearly 12 months in so we've done a full year of um of, of being in this situation where we're really isolated and and I know for me as um become being pregnant throughout the lockdown the first lockdown then becoming a mum 
um, being given birth and all the support that would normally be in place for mums, like the groups and um, when you're trying to learn to breastfeed and also as well just access to those like basic health services of having like the health visitor and the midwife visiting mm. and things like that it's it's been extra extra tough on on mums at the moment but I think even without COVID and the pandemic like it's kind of just magnified issues that were already there because I think a lot mm. of mums um, do feel that isolation and and I know from from my own research that I think it was about um, the statistics were potentially one in seven um, mums will experience postnatal depression or anxiety. Mm. And I think that that has increased. I read an article, it was on The Independent, that that's gone up to potentially one in two during the, the lockdowns and the pandemic. So there's clearly some, some really big issues that affect us when we, when we become parents and we go through pregnancy and birth and then we've got this tiny person that's dependent on us it is a whole new level of um, responsibility and, and and potential for depression and mental health mm. issues mm, I'll tell you there's loads of factors but being social uh, like when you become a mother that's really important but being social like having social interactions is really really important for our mental health no matter if you know we've recently um given birth or not you know it's it's part of like it's essential for us you know we are we are social beings so um it affects a lot of people and i i can tell um from you know I've, we've me and all my colleagues have been so busy um to the point that uh, like I had to look for like really think about other professionals like other counselors that I know to refer clients to because I couldn't take any more at some point um you know with childcare and all that I, I had a, a limited number of sessions that I could really offer but yeah um people it's never been so busy you know never like I've been practicing for almost four years now and um it's just everyone's busy you know um it's it's a struggle to find a supervisor now because everyone's working it's a struggle to find um counselor who can fit you in there um and it's sad you know because i mean in a way it's good that people are looking for help um because at least it kind of um it kind of lifts the stigma a little bit because more people are talking about it and it becomes a bit more normal mm. um but it's also sad that so many people are struggling yeah yeah I think that there's definitely going to be I mean even if it's busy now I think that the the repercussions of the way things have been over the last 12 months they're going to be there for a long time um, mm. you know, many I think Many, potentially many years to come because like you say it's that um that kind of support network that can can stop someone from falling into what could have been um so say for example you've you've had a baby and you're in those early days of motherhood like having that support and those people that are coming to your house like health professionals and also having um, like family and friends able to bring you simple things like be able to cook you a meal or just mm. come around and, and take the baby while you go and have a sleep or um, bring you a piece of cake and you have a cup of coffee and you have a chat you know all those things have been um, have been taken away from us mm. and, and I think that it's sometimes that those small things that can stop somebody kind of spiraling into something that is a, a deeper deeper sort of depression or anxiety where they feel like they really need some sort of extra help and support from a counsellor from a psychotherapist from a support group and um, so so yeah it, it's it's really difficult to go without those things at the moment mm. I think even um 
Well, 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 you know, with my son, because he was born in November 2019, we had a few months of like normality to an extent, and then, um, and then it all that was it. Like since March 2020, he hasn't been to a weighing clinic. He he has never been to a play group. Um, no health visitors uh, have been at home or he hasn't been to any health checks um, other than, you know, the normal GP and vaccinations and all that. But but nothing like about his development or anything. And to an extent, I was OK with it. And I, as I said, I am lucky and because I do have support. But um, I had friends who was really struggling. Um, like imagine your first time mum um everything's like super scary and you know you see a rash you see this you see that then you, yeah. you like there's so many questions and it, you can like there are reasons real reasons to be anxious you know it's just it's just a boring time you know um and having the support makes such a difference it just if you like have someone to come at home and just um like friend who has a few kids already and you know they look at it and they say oh that's normal or um I have so many friends who will come forward and say you oh, know that the baby doesn't want to sleep in their cot and I'm like well <laughs> I know that they one just well. don't, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. but you don't know that when you're like a first time mom and they're like oh baby maybe I should take them to the doctor I'm like well <laughs> maybe not <laughs> but you know it's it, it's so difficult you know and sometimes you don't have like you know and people say we're lucky for technology that you know we we could chat on um zoom and um, instagram and facebook and all that and and that's that's right yeah that's true because it is a bonus but sometimes you, you're so tired and you're so like into your own world and so busy with everything that you need to do that there's not much time for that if you know what i mean yeah and um I find it even more difficult now because he's like everywhere and he needs care and attention and like a hand to stop him when he's falling and that's like seems to be like 24 hours a day and I just can't find the time to text you know and or to call someone because I just like you, you just it's physically impossible you know and if you have a friend to come over that's a different thing but I just we're just not allowed to have that um health professionals they're just not interested you know I was um calling the other day to ask something about vaccinations and the the receptionist couldn't really she didn't really know what to say and I said can the doctor call me and she was like no everyone's um concentrated around COVID now so they're not going to call you to talk about vaccinations I was like okay like <laughs> that was very honest but you know I was like all right so if it's not that then it's not so important you know that's how it made me feel you know so mm. it's it, it it's hard it's really hard on all those um mothers who are kind of left alone to to deal with it in a way there's no village there's no support there's it's just like there you go take your baby and please don't take it back to the doctor's if you don't need to because we're busy anyway you know that's that's the message we're getting um and it's really hard yeah it feels like there's a there's a gap where you know we're at, at the moment in particular we're getting the the basic things met like you may be able to still go for scans and appointments and um go for vaccinations but when it comes to the the mental health side of it and the reassurance and the things that you really need as a new mum it feels like there's this big um there's this big gap that people more and more people are falling into and um, like i said before the the numbers for the postnatal depression postnatal anxiety have really rocketed recently and but they were already high and um, and and so it's interesting i don't know what you think as somebody who's trained as a psychotherapist about well, it's I, I personally speaking from experience during those early weeks of being a new mom, when you're so tired um, and you've given birth. So you've been pregnant, you've given birth, the, the, 
birth, even if it is a straightforward birth, there is always a level of having to process what's happened and maybe some level of, of trauma things mm. don't tend to always go 100% to plan and you're trying to process all that and then you have a new baby who is you know even if you this isn't your first baby it's still very demanding and there's so many things that you worry about and it's just overwhelming and I found it quite hard to know what was normal like what what was expected and what was maybe tipping into a, a deeper something where I was like is this postnatal depression is this something that I need to, to get extra help with and I don't know if if you know anything that you would say is maybe like a red flag for people to look out for of something that's tipping outside of you know normal I hate that to use that word but obviously there's a range and, mm. and when when maybe you should know like this is a time to maybe look for some extra support if you really mm. really need it yeah there are a few red flags but you just what you said just reminded me of like those first days and um we did had a um, health visitor coming um back then when I had my son and um, she made me laugh you know because they are not I mean I I don't know how much they're trained but they don't seem to be trained that well in mental health and um the questions they asked just made me laugh you know so they were like how, how do you feel and I was like well I feel exhausted you know I don't know if it's day or night and um, and they're like oh yeah yeah that, that's all fine and how do you feel mentally and I was like well um, I'm super scared and I don't know you know what's what I'm doing right and you know breastfeeding's hard and all that and you know I was pouring my heart and she's like oh yeah that's also normal um do you have some negative thoughts and I was like yeah all the time you know <laughs> I didn't want to test them you know because I'd say I know myself quite well and I know the red flags and I I knew that I was fine you know at that time but I, I, like honestly that's how I felt at the moment and they were like everything for them was normal you know that's normal and that's normal and that's normal and then um they kind of I, I wouldn't say that they want to brush it under the cup but you know but it, it's almost like they're a bit scared to hear it like it's mm-hmm. almost like if you can manage you know any other way then don't bring it up like um do you know what I mean um and you know because they they ask the question because they have to and when you answer that you're not okay they're like oh that's 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 normal (laughs) that's fine well then what do I need to say to kind of get your attention you know um and before um giving birth I actually um looked for some CBT or you know whatever NHS were offering because um I had a few issues uh, with uh, pregnancy and I was getting a bit um you know I ended up having my own therapy because I just know how to do it but I thought you know if they offer I'll use the service that they offer I don't mind that it's CBT um it took them um uh, seven months to sort out an appointment by that point I had my baby and I was totally fine (laughs) so you know the system just is still like don't get me wrong like NHS is great and I'm really grateful that we have it but it's just with mental health it's like extremely slow and a lot of people in the system are not trained enough to recognize the signs and you know the the red flags and they don't really know what to do after they recognize any and even if they do then you just put in the system and you just wait um, and nothing happens for quite a while so it's a bit you know and then you offered some like six sessions of cbt or some pills which is mm, you know um i mean i'd say it's not great it could be a bit better but yeah um red flags I'd say um, and I have quite a few clients who are experiencing um, some you know moderate or severe uh, depression at the moment um, and red flags I'd say it, 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 they that applies to every sort of um, mental health issue and um, then you know that it's becoming severe as when 
you've got thoughts of hurting yourself or or others you know that's that's the tipping point I guess and it, it, they don't need to be actions like you don't need to be acting on them but just the thoughts of like um you're gonna hurt your baby or you're gonna hurt yourself um that's not normal that you need help at that point um before that you know the tiredness is one thing depression slightly different you know because we we can all be tired um uh, as mothers and it's still tiring i mean 14 months in um yeah, yeah but, very tiring. But, but if you lose motivation uh if you if you can't sleep when you have the chance like if you just can't fall asleep um if you uh experience like physical uh how can i say um if you start experiencing that anxiety um in a physical way like panic attacks or um and you start thinking and you know people that really i always really get quite angry at that point because there's so much stigma around it that people are more likely to um go forward and say maybe i'm having a heart attack or there's maybe something wrong with my physical health than to actually admit to friends or family or health professionals that, that they might be um, depressed and they might be experiencing some sort of a mental issue. Yeah, and, and I thought it was really interesting that early point that you made about those red flags that, you know, c can be for all depression. Um, and one of the things that I specifically think is really important for, for new mums and new parents is that thing about the thoughts that you're having in your mind. So, um, so say for example, uh, I I know personally that in those early days when babies crack can cry a lot, it can be really overwhelming, and there can be times when you, I would know that I would never have hurt my baby, but there can be times when you really feel like you just want them to stop crying, and you you just want to run away. You know, it can, mm. be, it can be overwhelming and you can feel like when you're sleep deprived, I always say to my husband, there's a reason that sleep deprivation is a form of torture because it really is, you know, <laughs> you start to hallucinate and um, it's a physical, real thing. So, so there, there is a difference between kind of, I don't want anyone watching this to have um, shame or stigma around having thoughts of you know it doesn't mean you don't love your baby if sometimes you feel overwhelmed and like you just need a minute and you can't process everything but there is that that tipping point which I think is when those thoughts are becoming really invasive and you're not able to maybe physically take care of your child because those thoughts are becoming so strong and so overwhelming. Um, and then that's something where I think a lot of mums from mums that I've spoken to and other mums that I've listened to can really feel like they put on this face of um, everything's fine. They don't want anyone to know that they're having those sorts of thoughts because they feel a really deep shame about it. Mm. And I think that social media can exacerbate that because sometimes all we see is like perfect mums with perfectly dressed babies and um, people that have just everything seems so wonderful. And the, the more mums that can kind of share what they're really feeling and what motherhood can really look like is, is something that I think would really help. I know it, it it helps me sometimes just to hear other mums say, yeah, I sometimes felt like I just wanted to, to run or I needed to get out of the house for just even just five minutes to breathe. And um, mm. while obviously the partner or whoever is watching the child, but it's I think it's important for people to know that they're not alone in that and there's no shame. Hmm. No, I would say, you know, I see your point. Yeah. And, 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 and that's true. Um, there's like some of those, um, feelings and thoughts can be quite normal 
um, and you know when they're persisting and when when they start troubling you. Um, but I'd say we tend to like use counseling and um, therapy and you know even like going to the GP about mental health um, in the in the very last minute you know when things really get bad you know and when um, we've struggled so much already and I would say you know even if you just um, need a bit of help you just need someone to talk to um, then that's fine you know it's also like and that's that that that's the the sad thing about the stigma around mental health because you know if if it was a physical thing we'll call the doctor straight away yeah even if it's a runny nose we, we call the doctors now um if you hurt your finger you'll call the doctor yeah but it, it, if if you're having some negative thoughts if uh, you, you're wasting like oh i better you know toughen up and you know other mums seems to be doing okay and we don't even feel okay to ask about it so it's really something that I hope it's going to change soon because it affects people's mental health a lot and um, prevents loads of people from finding looking for help and finding help and um, the sad reality is that um, people lose their lives and you know uh, it becomes so difficult that you know at some point even though even though the, um, I think the, the research says that if you get the right support um, with uh, postpartum depression, um, most of the cases um, recover fully. So there's one of those um, illnesses that, you know, it's fully like you get absolutely fully recovery from it if you get the right help. Um, but yeah, it's just sad that people wait until it's too late sometimes. Yeah, and, and I think you made a really good point before about if you wait until it's too late or you wait, say, months and months. So I, recently I discussed with someone who waited eight months after their child was born. And then even when you would then go to, the, to access, say, an NHS service, there may be many more months until mm. you're able to access support. And, and like you said, I know that on the NHS, from what I understand, the main types of support that are available are um, CBT therapy and that may be something where you can have group CBT therapy with other parents and mums um, quicker than you can have say individual CBT therapy or they may like you said offer um, medications in combination or in place of the therapy the talking therapy. Mm. So um, I think it's a bit of a postcode lottery as well, depending on where you are. But that could be if somebody has to wait seven months for support because they can't have the financial, um, they, they just don't have the finances to have private therapy, then it can be, it can be a long, long wait for somebody to, to, to hold it down themselves. And, and, I, and I think that that's, another reason why you know you're not wasting anyone's time to go and tell somebody how you feel and whether mm. that's um going straight to your gp or telling your midwife or your health visitor or a breastfeeding support group and um, you know telling as i i personally found for me what was helpful was being as honest as I could be with people that I trusted so if I was mm. in a, um, if I was in a support group or I was speaking to friends or family members that I felt really comfortable with and I knew wouldn't shame me I was very honest and I think that doing that very early on in those I think it might have been about three weeks in after my daughter was born I did start to say to people, I don't really feel okay. And I think that it might be more than just kind of normal um, tiredness. And I'm feeling like, I just knew inside myself that it wasn't right how I was feeling. 
And because of that, I was able to, um, to go and see a counsellor that I'd previously seen. And I went to see her really early on. Now, obviously I did that um, and privately funded that because I was fortunate enough to be in that position. But, um, but it, it, it is really helpful. And I felt like just even just having that hour of talking to somebody who wasn't judging me and who I could just mm. let it all out to, it, it almost felt like that was enough for me in my position um, to, to feel massively better, like a huge weight was off my shoulders then. Mm. Well, that that's a big, big thing with therapy, you know, just being able to um, offload, just share those emotions and like take them out rather than take them with you to bed. Um, it helps massively, you know. And um, um, yeah, I'd say um, it's another problem that therapy is not available for everyone. Mm. Um, imagine you call the GP and you say that you're not feeling well and they say okay cool um, we'll put you on a list and someone will contact you when you know when there's a place uh, you wait seven months to hear from them um, we're in a lockdown there's no health visitors coming to your house there's nobody to spot any red flags you're not telling anyone anymore because you told your GP you know and and that's how things progress and that's how things go bad quickly um because it's just there's just not enough attention i'd say not enough hmm, support out there really and um i've always i've always um wanted to make everything i can to to make uh, mental health um how can i say to, to lift the stigma to talk a bit more about it with friends and family and on social media and um also I try and when I can um offer um low fees to to people who I really think uh, needed and before I was offering it to uh, student counsellors because um I knew what it was to to be in that position and now I offer low cost um sessions to to new mums because um it's just the system doesn't work in their favor and I've experienced that myself and I know how hard it can be so I do try and I know a lot of my colleagues also um offer similar um sort of you know um, discounts if you like just to to make it possible you know you, you some clients pay more some pay less just and it evens out you know but um at least you get um help is available that way to more pe people and more people can afford it yeah that's that's amazing that you do that for people because that's one of the things that i think we can i mean just us posting this video hopefully someone somewhere um a mum like us or you know also important to mention you know it's not just mums that are affected by depression after the birth of a child it can be can be dads and partners as well so you know I hope that people are going to find this on YouTube and it may just help them just to even the more people like us that talk about things and offer um, little chats that people can tune into for free it just helps mm. people feel like you know you're you're really not alone and um, it is so hard that there are so many barriers and so many holes for people to fall into where things get missed and people don't have time to talk to you properly. And um, I know for me, one of the things that I think would have really helped is after I'd given birth, and um, even though it was straightforward, there was a level of trauma to it because it was in the pandemic and I was supposed to have a home birth and the midwife couldn't get here on time. She wasn't available because they were short staffed. So I had to quickly get to hospital and it was quite stressful. And I was very far on in the labor and I had a lot of trauma. And um, I think I went into, I'd done a hypnobirthing course. So I prepared myself as well as I could to be calm. 
but I did panic at the end of the birth and it was I didn't feel held and supported and that was really really upsetting for me and I carried a level of um, panic after it in that week or two after it and it would have been really helpful for me to have somebody to talk to more about the birth just to process it and I do know that there's um I'll try and post a link in the description below that there are some charities that are offering um free counseling to new mums and also offering um like birth debriefs so that you can just have a chat with somebody and tell them how you felt after you'd given birth um because I think that that would have been massively helpful to me because there was a mm. lot of, um I think I held a lot of trauma from from that experience mm. yeah I can totally relate to that because um my birth wasn't that straightforward I'd say because it ended up in um c-section and um it wasn't really planned um I've also done a hypnobirthing um, um course and in a way that was I don't know it people the staff in the hospital didn't believe that I was so far ahead they even checked me uh but um it was very dim lighting and the lady who was checking me um had like the most normal glasses it was a bit comic <laughs> and she couldn't see very well and she said oh no you can go home and I was like I can't walk like I can't go home and then 20 minutes later I started pushing so it, it was really like I was in the hospital nobody believed they didn't even want to give me a chair because they were like you're not that far along and then after four hours of pushing um I had to have a c-section and um nobody really explained I mean I know what happened because a doctor walked in and you know they briefly said you know this and that and those are your choices but nobody I wasn't able then to go back and talk to anyone to be able to process it a bit more like because at that time um adrenaline and all the other hormones are like so high up but you know I was like up for whatever and I didn't really my husband um we talked later and he was like you didn't seem to be because he nearly died you know <laughs> it was massive stress for him and and um huge trauma and um, it wasn't so much for me but I guess the adrenaline levels and everything kind of hold you in a in a way I don't know if, at least for me or the hypnobirthing or I don't know what it was but I was sort of calm and um going along with it quite well but then later when I thought about it, I was like, well, I really need to speak to someone. And I actually called the hospital to just speak to like the midwives who were there or I don't know, someone who knows about my birth. And someone pulled a document from somewhere and they said, you know, it just says um, um, like how did emergency C-section and there's no more explanation to it. Mm. And I was like, well, can I not talk to someone? And they were like, well, there's, nobody will be able to explain what happened because that's what it says on the document. So I was like, okay. So, <laughs> you know, not much like in that area either. You know, it's like, it is what it is. You just have to then walk away and uh, be okay about it. And not everyone is. Uh, and I'm still kind of questioning what happened exactly. And, uh, you know, because I want to have more babies. I need to know, you know, what what to expect next time or what, how to plan it. Um, nobody's really able to give me that. And I guess it might be because of COVID, but, but still, it's um, people sometimes just need to talk about it, you know. Um, and there's not much... The prof like the, there's not much invitation for that if you like you know yeah and it takes a certain level of confidence to 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 reach out and actually say to your healthcare provider or your hospital actually I don't feel okay and I need you to give me some time so I can talk about it because as women you know we often tend to not want to bother people and we don't feel like we deserve the time and space to talk about things. And I think that's probably another barrier to women feeling like, you know, I want to tell people now, like you do deserve the time to spend um, and you 
you shouldn't underestimate the power that um, and I'm not saying for a second that medication doesn't have a place where it's needed to help people and I think that it can be really beneficial but I always think that having some sort of talking therapy as well as medication or instead of depending on the circumstances it it's just so helpful to sit with somebody and even if it's on online for now um, still just having that one-to-one time with somebody to really talk about how you feel and what you've experienced and they're not going to try and fix you or tell you um you know to pull yourself together and give you advice it's just I think that's why counseling and psychotherapy are so powerful is the Mm. container where that person that you're talking to is just going to hold all those feelings for you and take that weight for that little bit of time exactly and um um, I just want to say, because uh, you said, you know, it, it doesn't affect just just women. It can uh, be really hard for men too. And you know, my husband, poor thing, like nobody ever asked him how he is doing. You know, like we are complaining that uh, there's not enough support and there's not enough, like, um, um, how can I say, um, uh, the system doesn't really provide enough um, care, but for us and you know I mean that's important that's very important but for men there's like nothing there like honestly nobody asked him how is he doing and he's supposed to go to work and and this is a huge thing for them too it's massive it's like and the thing is we um go through it um kind of how can I say we carry the baby so we do all the reading and you, you feel the kicks at some point and you get that time to kind of to an extent adjust to it and like prepare for it then we get all those mother instincts if we do and um it's kind of and and we we, we've been exposed to all the stories and all that and they don't you know and it's it can be a massive shock for them um and a lot of my um male friends who uh, recently had babies are struggling a lot and if you know you're saying that we, we as women like we we don't like to bother people and um we always like try and do things um our way and like not be uh, pain and all that men don't cry you know they need to be tough they need to so mental health with men is even a bigger issue you know the the stigma there it's even it, it, it's tougher for them I'd say um to to seek help you know that step um because it's even like it, he we, we talked about that and he said you know he feels like he's not allowed to to feel that way you know he's not allowed to complain because it's me who had all the hardships you know and he's he just needs to so it, it's really you know there's I know that there's a lot of people struggling out there and I'd say you're not alone and um, help is there and there's loads of options as you said um, there's always the charities who uh, provide some free um, therapy and other sorts of um, support and you know counsellors fees can uh, you know just seeing a fee online it doesn't really mean much always call and check because there's always some exceptions yeah that's that's such good advice and and I know that actually I'm not going to keep you much longer because I know that you've you've got clients to see and, and you're I do. helping people and being an amazing mom and 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 I think that hopefully like we've said there like just to kind of wrap up what we've said is the main things are you know know that you are worth you are worth it and if you are experiencing issues where you're concerned about your mental health really don't be afraid to to seek out help and that can be from your gp or other health professionals or speaking to a counselor directly and um, i'm going to post links below to lots of helpful resources so um counseling directory and things like that where you can find really good quality counseling and um, and just to to know that you're not alone like you're a psychotherapist i'm training to be a counselor and and we've still experienced all of these 
challenges as well and um oh yes we do yeah yeah we're not we're not immune to them just because we have more knowledge of I've read about things in more detail so and um, I just really yeah, I, I... I'll tell you what the difference, sorry, I'll tell you what the difference is, because I quite often um, hear that from clients, you know, when I say, um, you know, I actually been through pretty much um, very similar situation, you know, and I feel the same way quite often. And they say, well, I thought, you know, as counsellor, you know, you, you don't you don't get to. Well, you know, I know myself quite well. And what happens, you know, when you go through therapy? you get to know yourself quite well and you get to um, have all the tools that you need um, to kind of manage dif difficult situations like that better. So um, you know how to look after yourself, you know how to spot all those red flags and you know what to do to help yourself after you've been through a course of therapy. So therapy gives you doesn't just help you for the moment. Um, it gives you a set of skills that you could use then later in life and you can apply to many areas really um regarding mental health you know and um so i do go through the same things i just um feel a bit more confident and um even just knowing when to seek help you know that's a huge thing and that's very important and and uh, just knowing that is like a big bonus but yeah uh, therapy does help definitely um and i'm grateful to have had it you know in the past <laughs> so so I know what to do now I know how to help myself yeah yeah and I'm sure you've helped lots of people just to having this chat with me and I, I so appreciate it and um yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go but thank you so much and for anyone watching we're gonna put links below so you can find out more and I'm happy to also chat to people in the comments and and answer any kind of questions or listen to people's stories and get back to people in the comments below as well so so yeah thank you so so much Stefina. i really appreciate your your time and and chatting to me about your experience as a psychotherapist and as a mom <laughs> thank you too ruth thank you oh, thank you so much